Sailors on Columbus's ships had no room to sleep, and their food was warmy. Columbus set sail from Spain on August 3, 1492. He had a crew of 86 sailors. They would spend the next 35 days at sea. He had three ships, the Niña, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Niña and Pinta were very small vessels. They measured only 50 to 70 feet from bow to stern, but they had higher speed and maneuverability. The Santa Maria was Columbus's flagship. She was a much heavier cargo vessel. The two smaller ships were caravels. The caravel was a popular type of ship in the age of discovery. Caravels were prized for their lightweight hulls. Their sleekness enabled them to sail into the wind. They were rigged with triangular lateen sails. These sails hung at a 45 degree angle to the deck. Columbus's ships were further modified. He used a three-masted model known as the Caravella Redonda. The first two masts were rigged with square sails for open sea speed. The third was rigged with a lateen sail for maneuverability. This made his vessels some of the best in the world. The Niña and Pinta could only carry 40 to 50 tons. They were crewed by fewer than 30 sailors each. The larger Santa Maria was a 110-ton ship. She ran aground on Christmas Day 1492 and had to be abandoned. But life aboard the small caravels was difficult. The ships were very cramped. There were no cabins for sailors to sleep in. Both Niña and Pinta had a single small deck at the rear. This was used by all the seamen. There was only one small cabin reserved for the captain. The sailors worked and slept in eight-hour shifts. All this took place on one tiny deck. The work was relentless. The sailors had to constantly adjust the rigging and trim the sails. They would also look for leaks and plug them up. There was always something to do. So sleep was very hard to come by. Hammocks weren't yet in use on ships. In the 15th century, food was another problem. Columbus stocked a year's worth of food for the journey. He had no idea how long the voyage would take, but it was all dry food. The sailors had salted anchovies and cod. They carried a supply of pickled beef and pork. They had some dried grains. Hardtack biscuits were also an important part of their diet. The sea biscuits were so solid, they had to be softened with water. A lot of the food was spoiled by heat and humidity. There were maggots in the biscuits. Not wanting to see them, the sailors preferred to eat in the dark. The biscuits were made into a slurry porridge. It was served in a large wooden trough. Ultimately, the sailors almost mutinied against their captain. The ships had been sailing for three weeks since the last port. It was the longest time a ship had sailed without seeing land. The crews were concerned that they wouldn't be able to return. No one was certain there would be land ahead. On October 10th, the crews rebelled. They threatened to take control of the ships. They demanded Columbus abandon his quest and turn back. He managed to persuade them to sail for another three days. It didn't take that long. On October 12th, land was finally sighted. By noon, the same day, Columbus had set foot on this new land. 